Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to examine the neck injury that the New York Giants starting quarterback Daniel Jones suffered in week five. Together, here we'll look at the video footage of the injury itself and compare it to the normal anatomy and to find out the mechanism of injury so we can understand it a bit better. My name is Dr. Stephen Wilson and on this channel I study specific sports injuries and how it relates to the athlete. On Sunday, the Miami Dolphins were playing the New York Giants when number 43 of the Dolphins, Andrew Van Ginkle, tackles Daniel Jones from behind. Daniel Jones is a right-handed quarterback, so his left shoulder is forward and he is looking across the left side of his body. When Van Ginkle makes contact with Jones, it pushes Jones' torso forward first and then followed by his neck. When this happens, inevitably it creates a whiplash type effect on his neck. It was later reported following an MRI that Daniel Jones had suffered a cervical spine or neck strain with a contusion. Luckily, it was not a more serious injury, but still certainly enough to cause a lot of pain and can keep him out of the lineup. Now, let's take a look at the relevant anatomy. The average human head weighs about 12 pounds, and of course, it sits on top of your neck. It is attached to your neck, which is made up of seven separate levels of bones, which creates your cervical spine. You've probably heard of the term C1 to C7, and that simply refers to your first cervical level all the way down to your seventh cervical level, where each level attaches to each other, it forms a joint. So, as you can see, you then have seven joints on the left side of your neck and seven joints on the right side of your neck. These joints are called facet joints, or the more technical word is called a zygopophyseal joint. Anyways, when these joints are moving properly, you have adequate range of motion and you are able to move your neck well. You can look up, you can look down, turn to the side, or shoulder check when you're driving. But if you were playing football like Daniel Jones and you were hit from behind, this causes a sudden compressive force that is transmitted through your neck, facet joints, causing them to suddenly compress. This is going to be very uncomfortable and problematic as the nerve endings around the joint will also become compressed. You can see on the replay how his body and torso move forward initially, then followed by the movement of his head and neck. This gives us a great visual of how exactly a whiplash injury occurs in your neck. Whiplash can be very painful as it also creates a lot of strain on the surrounding muscles and soft tissue, which can then cause bruising and contusions which also, of course, can create a more complicated uh, neurological symptom into your neck and arms like, uh, like numbness, pain, or weakness. Depending on exactly where the contusion and strain are located, this will influence how long Jones is unable to play. Daniel Jones had a similar injury in 2021 that kept him out of the lineup for six games. Yesterday's injury appears to be similar, but perhaps not quite as serious. Either way, Jones will be stiff and sore. I don't see this being a season-ending injury, though. If you like this video, please consider giving a thumbs up or subscribing. Take care.